Hi, I'm Eileen, and today in Studio 77, we are going to create the Atlanta skyline. We are going to make a mixed media, and we are going to use first pen, and then we don't have to wait for it to dry because it's just going to be a ballpoint pen. We are going to jump right into watercolors. And so everybody's picture is going to come out different, so I would really love it if you would post yours in our comment section. I might do something different today and post some pictures that my artists from my local class have done and show you how different those are at the end of this video. We will start with our light colors first, and you would just choose if you want your buildings to be gray or blue, um, what kind of background you want. You might want a night background, or you might want a daytime spring kind of scene. Um, and then we can do some trees and maybe a little grass in the foreground, or you can make your buildings just kind of drip right into the foreground. The Atlanta buildings, there are a couple of really neat ones that have um, the top of them are lit up at night and sometimes have an, almost an orangey glow to them. So I will be incorporating that into my particular painting. But I would like you to use your own creativity and not copy exactly what I'm doing. And again, like I said, it would be so fun to see what you've created in our comments section. I think artists inspire other artists, so let's see what we come up with. We're gonna start about halfway up the paper and just start working in some of the buildings that we see in the Atlanta skyline with some sketchy lines here that can just uh, give the illusion of where these buildings are and they do not have to be perfect. And um, you can use my picture to copy this from and I will post a photo of this at the end and then you can also get your own picture of the Atlanta skyline if you would like a different perspective. I believe this perspective is taken probably from close to around the Peapock Park area it's with the particular buildings that I'm seeing. And I'm going to have some lines that are longer that go down further in the paper and some lines that just kind of stop. So um, it's just going to kind of be a, an abstraction here. I do want to put the Ferris wheel in, so that's going to go right around here with another building. So the Ferris wheel is going to go right here. This is just a nice feature of the city now. So I like to have a little hint of that poking through the buildings. You don't have to have any exact lines in here, just a couple to hint to what it is. And of course, we'll be painting watercolor over this because this is mixed media. Try to be careful that your lines don't slant too much. You want to stay in line with the edge of your paper here as much as possible. But if you do find yourself slanting in the end, you could always frame it and uh, slant it in the frame and nobody will ever know the difference. There are several options for the foreground of this picture. You could do some trees down there or you could just let your buildings kind of drip into the foreground. Each window and each square is going to just kind of be a suggestion here for these particular buildings. So you can just make them easy going. In my version, I'm going to go ahead and add some abstract trees right here to the front. So these trees are going to be in the foreground. And if you just make some wispy little tree lines, kind of some Y shapes in here that just kind of branch off, you can decide what to do with them later. If you want to have some blossoms or some fall colors, or if you want to leave them kind of craggly looking for um, more of a winter scene. You know, dogwoods are big in Atlanta, so that could be something pretty, maybe some pink dogwoods or something like that. So um, these are just to kind of help enhance the foreground a little bit here. And, um, and then we can even paint some grass in that area. Now that I've finished my sketch, I have a variety of different sized brushes. I have my um, palette of watercolors and I have the top that I use for a mixing tray here. I have water and I have a just a regular paper towel so I can dab in case there's any mistakes. 
Today I'm going to create a wash, so I'm going to get a whole bunch of water on this paper, and that's why I am using a rather large brush for this part. And I can get pretty close to the details here. And I want to create a background that will have some contrast to these buildings. My buildings are going to be grays and purple tones this time, so to create that contrast, I'm going to go with more of like a morning kind of sky here. A wash is nice because you can put in lots of color and then you can let it leak into some other colors that you have going on. And you kind of have to work fast so the paper doesn't dry. Get real close to your buildings there with that background. You don't always have to start with the background. Sometimes I start with the background, sometimes I start with the foreground, but I do like to start with the lighter colors that I'm using. So I'm gonna go in here with a little bit of orange and see how that wash is just helping these colors blend together nicely. And I'm gonna use another shade of yellow in here. The more shades you use, it can give it a little more dimension. And just look for opportunities of where you can add contrast. And then we're gonna go to the top here with some light blues. Use my paper towel to lift a little bit of the color out. I like putting in a lot of colors and kind of layering the colors. And also I like putting in unexpected colors. The Ferris wheel is still wet, so that's why I'm getting a little bit of leaking going on here. Just gonna do a little bit of that purple in there to kind of tie that together with some of the other buildings that we have going on here. You don't have to follow your pin lines exactly. And that kind of just adds more detail to add some watercolor detail that's maybe not exactly right on with the pen detail. I'm going to add some flicking to my picture. So you basically put the color on your brush with a bit of water and get really close and you just flick it right on the paper. You can use a paintbrush or you can, some people even use toothbrushes for this effect. And it just depends how controlled you want it. I like mine a little messy, so don't worry about covering up anything. But if you are real picky about where you want your tiny little driplets to go, then you will want to probably put down something to mask the other parts of your picture. So you could just use a paper towel or a piece of cardboard or something to, you could even cut out something to keep an area unflicked upon. And this tiny detail adds a lot of texture to the picture. Dogwoods are a popular tree in the Atlanta area. And since this is the Atlantis skyline, I've decided to make it a spring picture with these dogwoods in bloom. 